if someone is pregnant, we usually say not to do any dental treatment. And when I say dental treatment, I mean no fillings, no, if they have cavities, you don't want to do fillings, root canals, etc. It's better to wait until after the patient delivers. The reason why is because sometimes the local anesthetic given to a uh, pregnant woman can, I mean, I, it, there is a chance that it could harm the baby. And so really the safest one that they could take, that the, if they had to do any dental work, the safest local anesthetic that a pregnant woman can take is lidocaine or even prilocaine because they fall under category B. So category A means they're completely safe. Category B, category B means that they haven't really done any studies in humans, but they have done studies in animals, and in animals they noticed that there was no risk to the babies. And then these ones are category C, and this is where no studies have been you know, done on animals or humans, so we don't even know if they're safe. And hence, we say don't even bother using any of these local anesthetics, just to use lidocaine or prilocaine. So allergies. Allergies are very common with esters type of um, local anesthetic. Although now there is no local anesthetic um, or there is no ester in a cartridge for a local anesthetic. So usually it's always always um, amides. So we don't you typically use any of these as a local anesthetic solution. We may use it as a topical. So benzocaine is a very common one that we use as a topical. And a topical is um, what you kind of rub into the gum. So it's like a cream that you just rub into a gum with a cotton chip applicator. And it just numbs the area slightly so that when the needle enters, you don't feel it as much. If someone is allergic to an amide or an ester, then there is a local anesthetic that could be given. It's like a Benadryl. And it basically diminishes that allergy. So this is a cartridge. When I say cartridge, this is what I refer to. So the lidocaine um, is in a cartridge, and it's in it's basically a solution that's inside a cartridge. And here you can, if you look really carefully, you say there's lidocaine and there's also epinephrine. And epinephrine is a vasoconstrictor. Remember, we were saying that a vasoconstrictor constricts or closes slightly the um, blood vessels so that the solution or the local anesthetic can stay there for a longer period of time. Now, lidocaine, which is usually most um, dentists' number one choice, it's a great local anesthetic because of its rapid onset. You know, within a few minutes, you would feel numb. And it's medium duration, which means that, you know, it lasts for an hour or two, depending on, you know, th there's many things that it depends on, but typically it's, it's good duration, medium duration, where the numbness will last for a fair amount of time. And then you can see over here, there's many other local anesthetic agents, which I won't really go over. Okay, so again, lots more. I will talk about bupivacaine, and only because this is the one that's more lipid soluble. This is the one we talked about earlier, where it enters the cell membrane really quickly. But the downside is that it's more potent and toxic. The advantage, however, is that it stays in your, or in the area, for a longer period of time. So if you have a long dental procedure, which is more than 1.5 hours, or if you have a procedure where after you're gonna feel a lot of pain, then maybe the dentist will you know, inject this type of local anesthetic because of its long duration of action, because it stays in that area for a long period of time, because you would stay numb for a long period of time, and, and staying numb for a long period of time may be helpful, especially in a situation like this. So benzocaine, this is an ester, is commonly, commonly used topically. So this is just for topical. It's not available in a dental cartridge. I talked about vasoconstrictor and why it's important. And the reason why it's important is because it prolongs the duration of action. So the local anesthetic stays there for a longer period of time. Also, what's important is when it stays there for a longer period of time, it's less toxic, okay? So it reduces the toxic effect. When you have a local anesthetic that has no vasoconstrictor and it just goes through really quickly, that makes it more toxic. 
to make it less toxic, we want to add a vasoconstrictor such as epinephrine so that it stays in the bloodstream for a longer period of time. And that's basically what this is staying over here. Because again, what a vasoconstrictor does is it constricts the blood vessel. So here the blood vessel is open, here it's constricted. But remember the downside is that anyone who has a cardiovascular disease or anyone who has heart issues, if you constrict the, the blood flow, it can affect the heart rate. So to minimize that, what they do is they give the lowest possible dose of anesthetic so that hopefully there won't be any um, you know, heart, any heart condition that can happen, any medical emergencies that could happen. Again, the way to avoid any medical emergency is to always take blood pressure before administering local anesthetic, especially if you have a local anesthetic with a vasoconstrictor, because the vasoconstrictor narrows the blood vessel, which means that the chance of the blood going through the heart is um, it's harder. There are many different types of local anesthetic drugs and how do you know which one to use? And really all that comes down to is figuring out if the client is allergic or not. And then also to figure out whether the dental treatment, if is it short, is it a short treatment? Is it an intermediate or medium treatment? Or is it like a very long treatment? Because if it's a very long treatment, then you're gonna use a special type of drug because um, that one will keep you numb for a long period of time. If it's just a short, you know, 10 minute or 20 minute appointment, then you don't need, um, you, you can just use an anesthetic that's uh, of a shorter duration where you don't need to be numb for a longer period of time. So the dentist will decide which one is the best for you, given the type of treatment that they're doing. Topical anesthetic is very important. It numbs the area before the injection. And so benzocaine is an ester, which is the most commonly, one, uh, commonly used topical anesthetic. And then we also have lidocaine, which again could be in a topical format. And that's the second most commonly used in the dental office. Now here we're going to talk about Oracrex. And Oracrex is really important because this is something that we as hygienists can do. And it's a type of anesthetic that basically it, you set it up like that and you inject it. Well, actually, I shouldn't say inject because when if you think it's actually injection free, which means you're not poking the person. So there's no pain involved. It's a pain free anesthetic. And what you're doing is you're just inserting the needle in between the teeth and the gums. So you would insert it, you know, right here into proximal and then you would just put it along the margin and then go back into the um, sulcus and the interproximal. You're not poking them, you're just, it's kind of like a probe. You're probing in between this, the gum and the tooth, and as you're probing or as you're walking it, you're injecting a, some of the solution. And that solution numbs the area so that when we debride, the client won't feel as much pain. So the onset is 30 seconds. As soon as you, you put it in, you wait 30 seconds, and then you go ahead and debride. You could even use ultrasonic. The water will not wash away the um, effect of that medication because um, what the studies show that within 30 seconds the whole area feels numb so you don't even need even if you put water even if you um, use an ultrasonic or a piezo it, the numbness should still be there it still stay and how long would it last for 20 minutes so keep that in mind as soon as you put it in you want to wait 30 seconds and then work on it pretty much right away because you only have 20 minutes before the numbness goes away here is a video that I encourage you guys to watch. Now I have to warn you, it is a long video, it's 24 minutes long, but the content that's covered in that video is really important because you will need all, to know all that content for when you're in clinic and when um, you're using the Oracrex solution. Another type of pain-free anesthetic is Cetacaine. And Cetacaine works very similar to um, Oracrex, it just has different ingredients. And again, you do the same thing. It comes in a liquid format. You get a disposable syringe where you inject the liquid into that. And you kind of, it's like a probe. You put it inside the sulcus and you inject it into the areas that are very sensitive for the client. And it's supposed to numb the area. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this lecture. If you have any questions, always um, feel free to ask me. Thanks for listening.